What's going on, folks? Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and I wanted to make a shorter, more recappy style video to just kind of hit on the highlights. So if you missed it, uh, there was the D&D Direct was on Tuesday, and I did a full live react video, and then I also did a follow-up discussion of that video with my good friend Sarah the Hype Goblin, but it's like a very long, several hour long video, and perhaps you're not looking to sift through all of that to find the parts that you want. So D&D Beyond actually put out an article that does a pretty good job of summing the majority of that up. So I thought I would just go ahead and review that to kind of give you a concise version of what was announced so you can kind of make your own decision if you want to go back and watch the longer one. Before I go ahead and do that, though, if you haven't taken a chance to subscribe to the channel, please consider doing so. It's a small little click for you, but it means a lot to me. All right, so here is the article. So this has a link here. I'll put a link in the description if you want, but they basically just talked a little bit about the player's handbook. Now, one thing that I find is very interesting is this line right here. They said this in the video. The book has been rewritten from start to finish and includes a ton of all-new artwork. The artwork is definitely true, but I also find it hard to believe that you will continue to drive home the fact that this is 100% still 5th edition if you will go ahead and say you rewrote the entire player's handbook from start to finish. I feel like if by definition you rewrote the entire book, it has got to be to some degree fundamentally different. It's fine. I'm looking at it. I'm going to be implementing this in one of my ongoing campaigns to see what it's like to just transition a campaign about 20-something episodes in from what was existing 2014 D&D to the brand new 2024 D&D to see how simple and easy that process is or how much of a nightmare it turns out to be, but also how truly backwards compatible it is with uh, you know characters that are different species that are not the ones in the player's handbook, as well as those playing subclasses outside of the player's handbook. So we'll see how that goes. I'll make a follow-up video after the first time. Anyway, it goes on to talk a lot about the book itself. Then talks about how you'll have early access for D&D subscribers. So this is next week. The master tier will get access to it on September 3rd. And hero tier will get it on September 10th. And then uh, everybody else will get it on September 17th, uh, which is the sort of wide release. But players can start finding this as early as September 3rd in local game stores if those local game stores have access to the early access program. They did also bring it up in the video that they said now our local game stores have that. Local game stores used to have that years ago, but then they kind of just took that away. It used to basically be if they were a Wizards Play Network store, which were ones that did, you know, D&D events or magic events, they could get access to the player's handbook or any D&D book really release two weeks early. Uh, and again, would also have access to the normal and the uh, collector's edition covers. I used to do this all the time back in the day until it basically evaporated and then it just went back to, you know, you get it when it comes out. Um, all right, so the 2024 Dungeon Master's Guide and Monster Manual. They didn't really, we saw a couple of different pages on the inside that we had not seen before, but nothing too crazy. So a little bit about um, the way treasure and things work. So that was kind of cool. Uh, and some new artwork for monsters. A lot of dragon-based artwork. Speaking of dragons, they announced that in the summer, uh, I don't know if they have this exact time frame, but in the summer of next year, we will be getting a dragon anthology book. Now, it doesn't have an actual title right now, but as we know, they've redesigned all different, all 10 dragons. So this is a 10 adventure anthology series with each adventure containing one of the either chromatic or metallic dragons. Uh, they also announced a new starter set for the revised rules. The current working title here is called Heroes of the Borderlands. It's set to launch in fall of next year. Now, I also think it's odd to release all of the books and then the starter set. Back in 2014, they released the starter set first, and then the books followed, but either way. Um, but then again, they also had the um, three basic rules were part of the original starter set. So anyway, Heroes of the Borderlands makes it easy to start playing D&D in minutes. Uh, it reimagines B2, the keep on the Borderlands, the old school, you know, either first or second edition adventure. Uh, for use with this box set by splitting the adventure into three self-contained booklets, the Caves of Chaos, the Keep on the Borderlands, and the Wilderness. Each booklet contains a short tutorial to help new and returning players learn as they go. And they also say a how-to video will accompany the release, which I think is the first time we've received a how-to video for how to play with the release of a book, which is very exciting, and I'm very curious to try that out when it comes out. 
They announced that a Secret Lair drop series has happened currently for the 50th anniversary. They showed off different cards for uh, Starian, for Karlak, other things like that. The September 1st, uh, there is a set of Lego minifigs are dropping. It is a random Lego minifig collection. These are what they look like. They look absolutely fantastic, and there are some definitely unique Lego sculpts that I don't believe we've seen before. For example, the Intellect of Hour, the Mind Flare. Uh, I don't know if we've seen that little dragon before. Obviously, the Lady of Pain head is unique. Uh, the kind of druid horned helm is also unique. We can see a variety of different characters here from bards to warlocks to mind flayers, Aarakocra, looks like Zast Tam. We've got a dragonborn. We've got the Lady of Pain and Tasha herself. Um, oh, it looks like I scrolled down and it actually says it. But it says each minifigure comes with an accessory to level up your experience. After all, what respectable dwarf barbarian will be caught without an axe and a handy torch for mowing down dungeon mobs? So there's a dwarf barbarian in here somewhere. Is that the dwarf barbarian right here? Looks like that's the case. So either way, very cool. Those will be out on September 1st. I will definitely be picking those up myself. And then probably what was a big... So oh, I'm sorry, we missed the next bit. Is new and returning third-party contributors. These are new third-party options that will be available on D&D &D Beyond. Some of these you'll recognize are already there, like the Dungeon Dudes, Ghostfire Gaming, Hit Point Press, Cobalt Press, and MCDM. But we're going to see Loot Tavern, Griffin Saddlebag, and Free League Publishing coming to D&D uh, &D Beyond in the future. It looks like Griffin Saddlebag 1 and 2 will be available. And from what I saw in a D&D &D Beyond tweet, it looks like Free League Publishing will be adding the Lord of the Rings role-playing game. That's the 5e compatible version will be added to D&D &D Beyond, which is pretty exciting. It's something I never thought I'd see. And probably one of the more surprising announcements is an upcoming series of two books regarding the Forgotten Realms uh, for reintroduction, I guess, if you would, to 5th edition. Now, a lot of people forget the Sword Coast Adventures Guide existed, which I understand. It was the first book released post the three core rulebooks and didn't really know what it wanted to be. So they're saying that this is the first ever source books for the Forgotten Realms. Again, I would say that the Sword Coast Adventures Guide was that, but either way, we're going to get a Sword, uh, a Forgotten Realms Player's Guide and a Forgotten Realms Adventure Guide. So this is basically a player-facing book and a DM-facing book. It said they also went out to say that it's going to contain a bunch of crunchy new player options, including new subclasses, new feats, new backgrounds, new spells, and a new type of spell. We're going to talk about that in a second. And then key information on how to join different factions like the Harpers or the Zentarum. They also mentioned the Red Wizards of Thay as a potential faction to join and potentially several new factions that were elevated to faction status from previous lore-related things. Uh... Again, I just want to touch on briefly the spells. So they said new spells. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these spells are revamped versions of spells that we saw in either Xanathar's Guide or Tasha's Cauldron that didn't make it into the player's handbook. Uh, but I also wouldn't be surprised if we're also going to see several brand new, wholly new spells that didn't exist previously. Same thing with the subclasses. I imagine we'll see a lot of new subclasses, but it also would be an opportunity to take some of the lesser uh, subclasses that could use a serious update and kind of juice them up to 2024 uh, capabilities. If we said there's going to be the ability to join the Red Wizards of Thay, I'd love to see an update to the Necromancer subclass from the 2014 Player's Handbook. I'd also think this would be an opportunity to increase any of, or to bring forth any of the subclasses that were in the Sword Coast Adventures Guide. That would be things like the Swashbuckler Rogue, the Sun Soul Monk, the blade singer wizard and then maybe pull some lesser known favorites that are often overlooked like the purple dragon knight slash banneret or you know one of my personal favorites the battle rager barbarian so also that had i think the arcana cleric as well it's an interesting opportunity to bring some of those forward while also introducing new subclasses that we've never seen before as far as new feats go I'm not really sure what we could be looking at. We could possibly be looking at more origin feats or possibly just additional level four plus feats. Backgrounds, that's kind of neither here nor there. Now, spells, it would be really great, and this would possibly be the opportunity to see things like Green Flame Blade and Booming Blade make their debut in the 2024 rule sets. But one thing that I'm very curious about is this new type of spell. There is rampant speculation about what this could be. 
I don't believe this is psionics because I feel like you would call it psionics and just get that as an opportunity to draw a bunch of people in for the fact that you're saying, you know, psionics are officially coming to fifth edition, which is not the case. So I don't know. Could this be higher than ninth level spells, which seems unlikely, but I'm thinking maybe we'll see some sort of like group ritual spell or possibly some sort of joint casting, or perhaps this is just something like a new school of magic, like chronomancy, temporal magic, blood magic, luck, fate magic. I don't know, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think it could be if you sound off in the comments down below. And then it goes on to say that the Forgotten Realms Adventures Guide will have a bunch of information for dungeon masters who want to run a variety of different types of games set in the world of the Forgotten Realms. They said if you're looking for more urban fantasy, they've got things like Baldur's Gate. If you're looking for more survival horror, they've got Icewind Dale. they got more traditional stuff in the Dale Lands. If you want to deal with more like non-confrontational talking stuff with a, maybe a little bit of a fey twist, that would be the like Moonshay Isles. So really cool to see a lot of this stuff. And I'm hoping there will also be some kind of either magic items or other cool things for players to utilize in the Forgotten Realms Adventures Guide, or for the first time ever, you truly separate it, and the DM book is just DM stuff, and the player book is just player stuff. And it rounded out to complete with the introduction of Project Sigil in a more formal uh, setting. This is the 3D virtual tabletop that's being built by D&D. There's a closed beta that you can sign up for at a link at the bottom here. I'm very excited about this. They showed off a bunch of new stuff. I've played around with Project Sigil about four or five times at this point, and this looks even better than the different ma uh, you know build quality versions that I've played through in the past. Also really cool to see that they're going to be doing things like 2D tokens on the map, which lets you import your own art for it. They already admitted that there's going to be some sort of sharing feature where you can share stuff that you've worked on. Uh, that's going to have full integration with D&D Beyond. You can take things like 2D maps from D&D Beyond maps and turn them into 3D maps in uh, Project Sigil. They even showed Drizzt fighting Optimus Prime, leaning into the fact that this is a kind of toy mini simulator, so the potential for you to apparently have Optimus Prime in there is a possibility, meaning that we might see other Hasbro properties like G.I. Joe or My Little Pony, possibly to some degree. And they stress that it is also not just a thing. It's it's designed for D&D, but there could be other rule sets and things put into here or custom built. They mentioned in the press release, uh, the press um, event that we went to, uh, that some people have built out Dungeons and Dragons based shoots and ladders in the thing, as well as things like chess or checkers. So I'm pretty excited to see what it means, the future of how these miniatures work and how... Uh, it's, again, committed to be on console and mobile at some point, but it's going to start on PC. And we really don't know what we're looking at as far as microtransactions or potential purchases of content packs in the future. Whether you're buying textures or buying whole packs of things, how minis work. I personally think that WizKids should work with them in some capacity, that if I buy a mini in real life, I should get a code to have it in the game or possibly just turn the minis into something basically like an amiibo where you touch the mini you buy down on a portal and then you now have that mini for usage in Project Sigil. So anyway, that was sort of a more a quicker recap of everything that was announced at the official D&D &D Direct earlier this week. I hope this gets most of the stuff across. Please also let me know in the comments if I missed anything. I think I hit on basically all the good highlights so that you can get that. And if you want to go back and watch that video, their video is only 19 minutes long. My discussion video is several hours, but I leave that up to all of you. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.